Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ayla habiti fillah Continue on in our study Of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Wasabi's treaties uh, ad Advice for the student of knowledge And we mentioned The point where the Shaykh said And I advise you with being humble before Allah And leaving off arrogance And we already uh, discussed this but it's important to continue, continually remind one another because the benefit or the, the reminder benefits the mu'min. It, re, it benefits the believer. And we can never get enough reminders on being humble and on fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout the Quran encourages us to fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we've mentioned countless times, taqwa wa jal. It means uh, adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refraining from those things he has prohibited and being humble with, regard, with regards to seeking knowledge and having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are things that will aid you in your talab al-ilm. And this is why the shaykh advised us with this. And then he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah the Most Glorified and Almighty says, I will turn away from my communication those who are unjustly proud in the earth. And if they see every sign, they will not believe in it. And if they see the way of rectitude, then do not take it for a way. And if they see the way of error, they take it for a way. This is because they rejected our com communications and were heedless of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that there are, are those who are heedless to the warnings and the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they choose error and misguidance over guidance and that which is correct. And instead of rectifying and causing rectification throughout the earth, they cause fasad, they cause evil and wickedness and the spreading of evil and wickedness. And perhaps this may be a, an opportunity to also discuss in some examples of way uh, of some people and how their how they discourage people from the path of guidance and encourage them to wickedness. For example, those individuals from groups like Daesh or the extremist group ISIS or ISIL, whatever they refer to themselves are themselves as, and a Shabab and other groups that use the media, use social media, use Twitter, use uh, the YouTube, use. Facebook and all of these other forms of media to reach out to those people who are vulnerable, to reach out to young girls, to reach out to young men who want Islam, who want the good of Islam and want to help Islam and want knowledge and want to rectify things. But they have no knowledge, so they fall easy prey to the people of misguidance who call them to misguidance. So then we have the situation where we have the girls thinking that they're making hijrah to something good, leaving off their, their lands without the permission of their parents, uh, leaving off their studies and leaving off the things that they do which make them productive hum human beings throughout any society, whether it be Muslim or non-Muslim, to come to destruction and chaos, to think that they're going to live a better and more Islamic life. But what kind of better and Islamic life are you going to live with Ahl al and those people who call you to extremism and call you to killing and slaughtering and maiming and destruction and spreading facade throughout the earth and then tainting the message of Islam, of true Islam. So that's a way in which some people... They call to evil instead of calling to good, and they call people away from guidance to the path of evil and error. It was reported that Mujahid rahimahullah ta'ala said, knowledge is not attained by shyness or nor being arrogant. So arrogance will never benefit you in trying to seek knowledge, that you need the humility, you need to have your, your hearts open to the truth, because you may get the truth from someone you didn't expect to, to give you the truth. They may remind you of an authentic hadith. They may not be from Ahlul Sunnah, they may be from Ahlul Bidah. It may be a scholar from Ahlul Bidah. It may be a scholar from Ikhwan al Muslimin. It may be from a non Muslim. It may be from anyone, but you have to accept the truth. The Ibra is, is the truth. 
that we don't know, as the Salaf used to say, لا يعرف الحق برجال لكن يعرف الرجال بالحق أو كما قيل that we don't know the truth by men, but we know the men by the truth. So the truth is our scale. The truth is our scale, and being humble is the only way you're going to be able to accept that truth, even if it comes from someone you did not expect. Because that is a requirement of knowledge, is that humility. If you want to achieve knowledge, if you want to better yourself, if you want to advance yourself. And then the Sheikh mentioned, as we already uh, went over, he said, thanking the scholars that you benefited from and supplicating for them. So always supplicate for those people who who helped you to achieve guidance or to be upon the path of guidance. Those ulama of Ahl Sunnah, those talabat al ilm from Ahl Sunnah, those du'at from Ahl Sunnah, those people who called you to good. And as a ten be that yes, I'm not encouraging people to take from Ahl Bid'ah, but perhaps you might have find your found your guidance from someone who was not from Ahl Sunnah. They may not have been Salafi. They might not have been from Ahl Sunnah. They may have been a Mubtadi'ah. They may have been from Khan Muslimin. They may have been a, a Sufi. They may have been with Jamaat Tabliq. Whatever. But the fact is, is they gave you something good and encouraged you with something good from the religion to call you to the guidance of Rabbil Alameen. And it stuck with you. And you began to practice. And you came closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So supplicate for their guidance. Supplicate for their guidance. Do not curse your brothers and sisters. And do not curse and close the door of mercy with those people who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and mercy. Because none of us knows, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When the ahlakum liya'mala bi'amala ahl al-jannah hattama yukun hattama hattama yukun bainahu wa bainaha in uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily one of you will do the deeds of the people of Jannah until what is between them and paradise is just an arm span length. And then the qadr will take over them, the decree will take over them and they will do the deeds of the fire and enter it. And vice versa as the hadith goes. So this lets us know that none of us is guaranteed guidance. None of us can claim piety. None of us can claim that we're for sure going to Jannah. And that we should have humility. And we should supplicate, of course, for ourselves. Ihdina surat al-mustaqeen. Guide us to the straight path. And seek guidance for your brothers and sisters, even those people from Ahla Bidah who are misguided, ask Allah to guide them. It's not always having a strong motive that you want, you want to curse them, you want to humiliate them. No, you want them to be guided. You want guidance for the khalq. You want guidance for the creation as you want guidance for yourself. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ma yuhib, uh, that one of you That one of you does not truly believe until he wants for his brother what he wants for himself. So wanting for others good is wanting for yourself good. So supplicate for the people that you benefited from and the people who serve Islam and serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call people to it. Then the Shaykh mentioned, be far away from the people of innovation and their books and evil scholars and their books. And this is no contradiction to what I just said. Well, alhamdulillah, look at the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. jimal, khalqillah. This, this beauty, these beautiful sceneries. When I look at what's before us, as you're, if you're watching this, you'll see all of these places I've been to. These are beautiful, uh, reminders of the existence of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who created all of this. And all of this is not created out of havoc. And all of this is created so that we would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on what? Based on kitabillah, because these are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, based on sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not 
based upon inhiraf and misguidance. So as the Sheikh said, coming back on target, that we should be far away from the people of innovation and their books and evil scholars and their books, and we'll discuss this in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa